Hey guys, this is Mr. C, a layman, uh, Mr. Cologne from reinforcemyfaith.com. And I wanted to talk about the first three chapters of Genesis and also give a brief introduction of Genesis as well. As a former high school teacher who still teaches in a certain way, I wanted just to mention Genesis as it is the uh, beginning of the Bible, the sacred scriptures, the word of God, the written word of God. And I think it is a very important book to start off with. Even if you're reading New Testament or want to focus on the Gospels, I would suggest before you even pick up one of the Gospels to read, uh, read the first three books of Genesis to give you a good prelude and prologue of what is going to happen. All right, so that the O episode here, a video of Genesis chapters 1 to 3, introduction and their historical nature of the first three chapters. Let's start off with Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was without void form, and the darkness was over the face of the deep, but the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then we move into the second Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 28, from the middle of the Bible. There are dual canonical book, but still kind of important, which reiterates some points here. Look at the heavens and the earth and see all that is in them. Then you will know that God did make them out of nothing, ex nihilo, and in the same way the human race came into existence. And then symmetry with the beginning of John's Gospel. We have here, in the beginning was the Word, or Logos, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt or tabernacled among us. The Logos became in flesh, and the Word was God, not a God, but God. And we move into just uh, Genesis. We have here that it's who the attributed traditional author is Moses, as is the first five books of the Bible or the Torah. Uh, we also have the, the 1400s or the 1200s BC where Moses will have written this. And Genesis is can be broken down into two big chunks or two major sections, uh, chapters 1 through 11, which covers the primeval history or early world. The primeval narrative's cosmic its scope, it stretches across unknown ages. And then we have chapters 12 to 50, the patriarchal history, which focuses on the human family, a single human family, and how God shows them to show them how he's going to save or rescue the world. And a good summation of Genesis is Genesis centers on the covenants linking God to his chosen people and the chosen people to the promised land covenants being a type of godly contracts and we have here genesis 1 the creation of the world which i will call the macro view of creation as opposed to genesis 2 the creation of human beings or the micro view of creation god here is mostly referred to him as elohim and it really highlights that he created the universe out of nothing that the universe is good and it has a purpose and that days of creation resembles a temple and one what does one do in a temple? Well, they worship properly God. And we have moving on to Genesis 2. A chapter mainly calls God Yahweh, as is revealed to Moses. Genesis 3 is um, Exodus 3 as well. As a covenant of Lord, that is, and has a notion that, he, that it is good that humans should not be alone. Obviously, God talking to Adam, but we can pull back and also talk about humanity how to be fully human one must be in a harmonious social relationship with others like the triune god is and then we have genesis 3 which is the fall of humanity through the sin of adam and eve which is how we inherit original sin and also there is a promise of a redeemer a redeemer a wounded victor in a proto evangelium or the first gospel which it's what Genesis 3, 14 or so it talks about. Key ideas is focusing on Genesis 1. And there on the right, we have the days of creations, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7 there in the top. And how it is painting a picture of what it is. Genesis 1 portrays God creating a good universe. Days of creation are described like a great temple for the worship of God. The universe itself is a type of covenant between God and man with Adam as a high priest. God tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything that exists was created by God out of nothing, ex nihilo. 
And the first books of the Bible here are best, but not solely understood as a poetic narrative, a mythopoetic narrative. And they tell what we need to know about understand God and why he created the universe. Outlining it, it shows how carefully it was constructed and emphasizes the why, not the scientific how of creation. We have a so-called second account of creation in Genesis 2, and it, what we previously mentioned, it talks about God mainly as, refers to God as Yahweh, and that it really f talks about more about his covenant love. Um, in it, Genesis 2, we, it sees that God told Adam he could eat of any fruit except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God brought about every creature to Adam, and now Adam named them, showing that Adam was different from the animals. And it also emphasizes, again, that covenant um, union between a man and a woman and how we have to be in a harmonious relationship with other people. And I have here that in the historical nature, but must be believed a things by Catholics. This is by a 1909 Vatican Pontifical Biblical Commission. And we have here number one, the creation of all things by God at the beginning of time. Number two, the special creation of mankind. Number three, the unity of the human race. Number four, the original happiness of our first parents in a state of justice, integrity, and immortality. Number five, the divine command laid to prove his obedience. Number six, the transgression of that divine command at the instigation of the devil under the form of the serpent. Number seven, the fall of our first parents from their primitive state of innocence. And number eight, the promise of a future redeemer. Again, the Proto-Evangelium of Genesis 3, 14 to 16. We have here um, from the modern day second edition of the Catechism, or the 97 Catechism of the Catholic Church, CCC 289. And it states, among all the scriptural texts about creation, the first three chapters of Genesis occupy a unique place. From a literary standpoint, these texts may have been at the first sources. The inspired authors have placed them at the beginning of scripture to express in their solemn languages the truths of creation, the origin and its end in God, in its order and goodness, the vocation of man, and finally the drama of sin and the hope of salvation. Read in light of Christ, within the unity of sacred scripture and living tradition of the church, these texts remain principal source for catechesis and the mysteries at the beginning, creation, fall, and promise of salvation. And in 392, it goes on to say the account of the fall in Genesis 3 uses figurative language, but affirms, but affirms a primeval event and a deed that took place in the beginning of history. Revelation gives us a certain T of faith that the whole human history is marked by the original fault, freely committed by our first parents. It's it's okay, but if you can see this language as opposed to the or traditional language is more loosey goosey. It um, talks about authors plural as opposed to just Moses and him having editors. It, it almost implies that you can take it as a more liberal understanding. So it's already kind of watered down to what the church has taught in 1909. So that 1958 break. Um, how theology is expressed differently is really reared its ugly head here, but it is still a um, orthodox statement, which it was just stronger and less, I guess, cucky in a sense. And uh, f f sources for original reading, for continual reading, I would use the obviously a good Bible, right? Read it, the direct source there. And maybe then you go out to ancient commentary in, in Christian scripture. And that way you can see what the early father said about Genesis. Yeah, or there's a Haydock Bible also, um, the go-to traditional trend, um, commentary on the scriptures. And in terms of a more modern conservative commentary, uh, the Ignatius Study Bible itself, um, it's pretty good. And also the Catholic intro of the Old Testament, it's also a good resource. And where I got most of this information was understanding the scriptures from Scott Hahn from the Didache series, which is also provides a good source in terms of understanding Genesis. So hopefully this little overview of Genesis as a whole, but Genesis one through three in particular, it's helpful in understanding its historical character and its importance in the scriptures. Take care guys and make sure to seek the good, the true and the beautiful. God bless.